The Ultramarines. These blue armored super soldiers are the most well-known faction in Warhammer 40,000. They have served as the poster boys of the setting for years and have been at the forefront of many of the major conflicts in the lore. Compared to the other Space Marine factions, the Ultramarines don't favor any particular style of warfare, making them a jack of all trades. However, the Ultramarines are the most analytical, tactical, and strategic of the Space Marines. They scrutinize their foes with a keen eye and determine which strategies and tactics to use to overcome their enemy. Because of this, the Ultramarines have earned numerous victories for the forces of mankind, also known as the Empire of the Imperium. They attribute their tactical brilliance to the close following of the Codex Astartes, a military guidebook written by their Primarch, Rubute Gelliman, the progenitor and leader of the Ultramarines. But how do you play an Ultramarine in Dungeons and Dragons? How do you take an Ultramarine from the Grim Dark of the Far Future and put him into a typical D&D fantasy world? Welcome to Grim Dark and Dragons, the channel all about Warhammer, Dungeons and Dragons, and combining the two to create epic experiences. My name is Tom, and today I'll be showing you how to play an Ultramarine Space Marine in D&D. This is my first Warhammer D&D character build, and I plan on doing the original 18 Space Marine Legions first. Please subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my other Warhammer D&D character builds and other future D&D Warhammer content. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's go over some rules that I'll be following in order to make this D&D character. I'll be using official D&D sources only, so no homebrew or unarthur con allowed. This is because some groups don't allow these things in their game, and I want to make sure it's as standard as possible. Next, I'll be focusing on levels 1 to 10 only, as most D&D campaigns don't make it past 10th level. Finally, I'll be utilizing the 27 point buy system for making this character. This system allows for the most freedom and flexibility in character creation, and it's also favored by most experienced D&D groups. With that out of the way, let's look at some objectives that I made so that we can play the most fun and lore accurate Ultramarine as possible. These objectives make up key characteristics of an Ultramarine, so these aspects must be conveyed in some way through the character. You are a Space Marine, so you must be deadly and tanky in combat. Space Marines aren't called Angels of Death for no reason. You must be able to rack up lots of kills and stay in combat for a long time. Among these Space Marine factions, the Ultramarines are known as the Jack of All Trades. While you won't be the best in any one ability, you will be good at all of them. The Ultramarines are known as being very tactical and disciplined in battle, so our character build must have abilities that let him lead his party and outwit his enemies in battle. Finally, Ultramarines are known as statesmen as well as warriors, so they should be able to excel in social encounters just as well as combat encounters. For the Ultramarines race, you should obviously be human. Choose the Variant Human option at level 1 to gain a free feat. Choose the Fighting Initiate feat, which gives you a free fighting style of your choice. Choose the Archery Fighting Style. I'll explain why later. For your Ability Score improvements, take a plus 1 into Strength and Dex to help our Ultramarine be a better melee and range fighter. Variant Humans also get a free skill of their choice. Take the Persuasion skill. This will add to our Statesman aspect that I was talking about earlier, as you will be more charismatic. For your free language of choice, choose Elvish. At one point, the Ultramarines worked with the Elves in order to resurrect their dead Primarch, but don't tell anyone because that's heresy. For the Ultramarines background, choose Soldier. With the Soldier background, you get proficiencies in athletics to help you climb, lift, and carry, and intimidation. You also get proficiencies in land vehicles to help drive your party's wagon around, and also a gaming set of your choice to help you pass the time. Let's take a look at ability scores, which affects our ultramarine skills, how deadly they are in combat, and how many hit points they have. Let's put a 15 into strength, raising it to a 16, and giving us an ability score modifier of plus 3. This is important because our ultramarine's primary fighting style will be using a sword and shield, and he'll be wearing plate armor in place of power armor. Let's put a 12 in dex, so that the ultramarine is good with ranged weapons as well as melee, making him a jack of all trades. This will give him a plus one modifier in dexterity. Let's put a 14 into constitution, giving him a plus two modifier to his con saving throws and his health. Let's put a 10 into his wisdom and intelligence scores, so that he's considered average in these abilities. This makes sense since the Ultramarines have some education, but they aren't nerds like the Thousand Sons. Finally, put a 12 into charisma, so that he's considered above average in handling social encounters. Now let's get to the fun part choosing the Ultramarine's class and learning about his abilities and features. We are going to take 10 levels into Fighter and specialize in the Battlemaster Archetype at level 3. 
Fighter is a great class for our Ultramarine to take. Fighters excel in combat, and that will make our Ultramarine very deadly. At level 1, fighters get proficiencies in all armor types and weapons, in addition to con and strength saving throws, making them extra resilient in combat. Fighters also learn two proficiencies at level 1. Take Survival, which will help our Ultramarines survive out in the wilderness, and Perception, which will help them spot enemies and ambushes. Fighters also get to choose a fighting style. Take Dueling. This fighting style will make you even deadlier with a sword and shield. With the dueling fighting style and the archery fighting style that we took earlier with our feet, our Ultramarine will be deadly in both melee and ranged combat. The last feature that our Ultramarine gets at level 1 is called Second Wind, which lets him recover hit points in combat using his bonus action. The Ultramarine learns Action Surge at level 2, letting him take two actions in combat instead of one, once per rest. You can use this to use the dash action and then attack the enemy, or you can use the attack action twice at level 5, giving you four attacks instead of two. At third level, the Ultramarine learns abilities for his Battlemaster archetype. Battlemaster is the perfect archetype for our Ultramarine to take because you get these things called maneuvers that let you use special tactics and strategies in battle. I'll go over which maneuvers I recommend that you take for the Ultramarine soon. At Fighter 4, our Ultramarine gets an ability score improvement. Put 2 points into your strength, raising it from a 16 to an 18, and modifying it from a plus 3 to a plus 4. This will make the Ultramarine deadlier with his sword, but don't worry, our bow will only be weaker for a couple levels. Let's take a closer look at maneuvers, the special tactics and strategies that our Ultramarine can use in battle. You learn three of these maneuvers at level 3, and two more at level 7, and two more at level 10. So choose your favorite three at level 3 and then go from there. Commander's Strike is a great tactical maneuver for you to take. Acting as a battlefield commander, you can order one of your allies to attack. And this is really great if you have a rogue, paladin, or barbarian in your party. Tactical Assessment is another great maneuver for you to take. You can add a D8 to any Insight, Investigation, or History check, letting you read or possibly even remember a weakness of a specific enemy. Rally is another maneuver that lets you act as a battlefield commander again. You can inspire an ally to fight on, giving them extra hit points in battle. Ultramarines are also known to be very disciplined fighters, and precision attack conveys that aspect. With this maneuver, you can add a D8 to any attack roll, even after you've found out that you missed. Commanding Presence is another maneuver that affects your skills, letting you be more charismatic. You can add a D8 to any Performance, Intimidation, or Persuasion check. Maneuvering Attack is a great tactical option for your Ultramarine. Ultramarines know the importance of positioning in battle, and with this maneuver, you can move your allies around the battlefield. The final maneuver I'm going to suggest to you is Brace. Like Precision Attack, this maneuver characterizes the Ultramarine's discipline in battle. With Brace, you can use your reaction to get an extra attack off on an enemy when they move within 5 feet of you. These are all great maneuvers to take, and in some way, they add to the Ultramarine's tactical, discipline, and charismatic nature. At 5th level, you learn Extra Attack, which lets you attack twice instead of once when you take the attack action in combat. This is a simple yet very fun ability, because rolling more dice and killing more enemies is always great. At 6th level, the Ultramarine gets an ability score increase. Put 2 points into Dex, raising the score from 12 to 14 and giving you a plus 2 modifier in that ability. This will make your melee and ranged weapon attacks equal now. At 7th level, the Ultramarine learns another tactical feature called Know Your Enemy. With this feature, you could read your enemies, and your DM can tell you if they have a higher, lower, or equal HP and AC compared to you, so long as you can interact with them or observe them for one minute. This is a great tactical feature that informs you whether or not you should fight certain enemies. The Ultramarine learns two more maneuvers at level 7 as well. At level 8, you get another ability score improvement. Put two points into Charisma, raising it from a 12 to a 14, and giving you a plus two modifier in that ability. This will make you a more charismatic leader and let you handle social encounters better. At fighter level 9, you learn an ability called Indomitable, which basically lets you reroll a failed saving throw. This ability is great for helping you survive nasty spell effects, charms, or even things like falling off a cliff. At level 10, the Ultramarine learns two more maneuvers as well as improved combat superiority. This makes your Battlemaster maneuvers even deadlier and more efficient in combat. And that wraps up our Ultramarine character build for levels 1 through 10. Let's briefly discuss how the objectives are met through this character build. Our character will be extremely deadly and tanky. 
The Ultramarine will be hard to take down, with 20 AC with plate armor and a shield, and 84 hit points at level 10. He also has the fighter features Indomitable and Second Wind to help him stay alive in combat. With extra attack, action surge, and your maneuvers, you'll be extremely deadly in combat as well. You are the jack of all trades with all around good ability scores as well as being great with melee and ranged weapons. The Ultramarine is tactical and disciplined in battle with his maneuvers and know your enemy feature. Finally, the Ultramarine is a statesman with his plus two in charisma, commanding presence maneuver, and persuasion proficiency. This will help you be a leader in your party and excel in social situations. And that is how you play an Ultramarine Space Marine in Dungeons & Dragons. What are your thoughts on the character build? Would you build them differently at all? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to Grimdark and Dragons. And we'll catch you all in the next character build video.